Hi guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Rowie and I am a freediving instructor based in Kotau thanks to COVID. If you are not interested in freediving, please do not unsubscribe. Just go and watch the other awesome content on my channel. I have a versatile collection of videos from around the world with quality footage, travel ideas, travel tips, things to do. So just go and watch one of these videos. I'm sure you can find something to watch that you like. Also videos about diamonds and gemstones. I just published a video about Kotao viewpoints, which I think is amazing. So I will link it on the description below. If you are interested in free diving, if you are a beginner or want to free dive, or even if you are an instructor, then this video is for you. So open air and let's start. On today's video, I'm going to talk about all the equipment you need when you go free diving. I have a lot of students who ask me which equipment to buy, so I'm going to cover everything you need. But this video is also designed for professionals and instructors and advanced free divers. I'm going to cover all the safety equipment you need on the boat. This video can also serve as a checklist of all the equipment you need. There is nothing more disappointing than going on the boat, it's a beautiful day, the conditions are perfect, and then you forget one piece of equipment and it ruins your day, it ruins your dive. I also made a checklist where you can download the PDF on the description below and just print it on your dive shop and put it on your bag. And then just before you go on a dive, just make sure you didn't forget anything. I use this checklist every time before I go on a dive to make sure I have all the proper pieces of equipment. So this is my free diving bag with all the equipment. So let's see what's in the bag. The first piece of equipment you need is a mask and snorkel. You need a low volume mask because when you go free diving, you're using the air in your lungs to equalize the mask. And the deeper you go, the more air you need to bring out of your lungs to equalize the mask. And a low volume mask is quite important. If you don't go, very deep, up to 10 meters, you can use a scuba mask, but if you go deeper than 10 meters, you want a low volume mask. I have two sets of masks. One is even more low volume than this one. I don't have a snorkel on it because I find it very annoying and not very hydrodynamic when you go to depth, especially if you want to do a personal best and the snorkel is dingling on the side. So I carry two masks, one with a snorkel for safety and the other without a snorkel for a better performance. This is the Cressy Calibro. I'm pretty happy with it. And this is the C4, which is really low volume. Excellent mask. You also need a snorkel, especially for beginners, because they breathe through the snorkels before they go down. The relaxation breathing is done through the snorkels and you must have a snorkel for safety we never dive alone, and when you safety another person, you look down uh, at him when he's going down or coming up uh, using the snorkel. The second most important piece of equipment is the fins. Here are my fins. In free diving, you are using long fins because they have better thrust. You can dive deeper, faster. Long fins have much better propulsion. This is carbon fins, they are very soft. I use them when I'm training to go deep with the buoy. I also have another set of plastic fins that I use when I go teaching in the pool or when I go uh, fun diving with students. Um, I don't want my super expensive carbon fins to uh, scratch. So just like two sets of fins, one uh, super cheap and the other one quite expensive but better for performance. The third most important piece of equipment you need is a weight belt. You need a belt. I like the plastic belts because uh, they don't stretch too much like the scuba belts from the fabric and you need the weights. As a freediver we want to be neutrally buoyant at a certain depth usually 10 meters if you are a beginner and advanced and 30 meters if you are a professional in a competition. Very important, it makes your life and your dive much easier if you are properly buoyant. And the fourth piece of equipment you need is a wetsuit. 
When you are free diving, sometimes you stand still for a very long time, you do your relaxation breathing, and if you are cold, then it tempers with your relaxation, and if you are not relaxed, then it tempers with your equalization and with your breath holds. So very important to stay warm with the right temperature, and a suit is the way to do it. This is a super nice suit with the Yamamoto smooth skin. I really like it. Keeps me warm, never cold in the water. You want a wetsuit to be the right thickness for your region. So right now we're in Kotau, Thailand. It's not very cold, but if you are diving in Sweden then, or Switzerland in the lake, then you need a really thick, at least seven millimeter wetsuit. The next most important piece of equipment is a lanyard. You want to stay safe when you go free diving, especially if you go over 10 meters or if the visibility is bad or if there is a current. You want to use a lanyard. I don't understand these instructors and in schools that don't use a lanyard. Even if you have a 30 or 40 meter visibility and people think, oh, I don't need a lanyard, what happens if your safety body can't equalize on the way down? How will it bring you up? If you have a lanyard and something happens and your body can't go down because of equalization issues or any issues, then they can still retrieve you using the line and pulling it up. So a lanyard is very important. I think every diver should have its own lanyard. This is my personal lanyard with the belt. I like it because you can use it for no fins as well. I also have another wrist lanyard on my buoy at all times because a lot of free divers, they come without the lanyard. So my students can uh, use this one on the buoy and change. I don't like to change every single time, so I have my own. If a school doesn't have a lanyard on the buoy, then you don't want to dive with this school. You really want to be safe while free diving. Also, you want to get familiarized with using a lanyard. Some schools don't use a lanyard and they have a very good free divers, but then they go to uh, dive with other schools that use a lanyard and they are not used to using a lanyard and then they can't relax properly because they are not used to diving with the lanyard. So it's a very uh, good practice to start using lanyard on an early stage in your free diving career. Lanyard, very important. When I go free diving, I just wrap the lanyard around myself like this. And then whenever I need to dive, I just attach it to the line. This is the free experience lanyard. I really like it, extremely durable and good quality. Then the number six most important piece of equipment is the nose clip. Why do you need a nose clip? Free divers use a nose clip because when you're diving with a nose clip, you don't need to equalize your mask and you don't need to bring your hand to equalize. The nose clip is just pinching your nose and you can equalize without moving your hands. It's making you more hydrodynamic, it's making the dive more simple, you don't need to equalize the mask, and it's also a good uh, accessory to practice mouthfeel, which is a better way to equalize, it's outside the scope of this video. You also want a nose clip if you are doing no fins, then you don't need to bring your hands to equalize, or if you are doing new personal best. Also when you are doing static or dynamic in the pool, then I prefer to use nose clip. First of all, you have water on your receptors over here and it triggers the mammalian diving reflex faster. And also it helps uh, controlling your contractions and make sure you don't have air leaking from your nose when you're having strong contractions. This is the octopus nose clip. It's my favorite. If you want to buy it, you can contact me and you can buy it for me for a discounted price. The next piece of equipment, and that is only if you are diving in the pool, but I leave it in the bag all the time, is goggles. Goggles are useful when you are doing dynamic or static apnea in the pool. For me, I have really sensitive eyes and the chlorine makes my eyes burn and it uh, tempers with my relaxation. So I'm using very small goggles. Still, the water can touch my receptors and my, my, my mammalian diving reflex can kick in. It's just a matter of personal preference, but most free divers use goggles even in the pool when they are doing dynamics or even static. The next piece of important equipment you need while free diving is a dive computer. 
I have this dive computer, it's a Garmin dive computer. It's pretty good because it's a multi-sport dive computer, but it's not very good with the analytics. I actually emailed them to improve some things. They didn't listen to me yet, but hopefully they will. It doesn't matter just as long as you have a dive computer where it can show you the total dive time and the depth is enough and then you can analyze your dive after. It's the most important part of the day when you go back to the beach and you reach a new personal best and you analyze your dive with your friends. Really awesome. The dive computer is also very important because you can set alarm at certain depth. So for example, if you want to do a mouthfeel at 15 meters, you can set an alarm and when you reach 15 meters, the dive computer will vibrate or will make a beep and then you know, oh, I reached 15 meters and now is the time to do a mouthfeel. Or even if you are on a very long line because your instructor is lazy to bring it to the depth that you want. And let's say it's a 40 meter line and you want to reach 20, so you can set an alarm to let uh, your computer notify you when you reach the desired depth. Okay, now the most important piece of equipment in free diving is the camera. We all like to take pictures, we all like to show how cool we are with the camera, but seriously now, a camera is also very important to show the technique. It's very important that your instructor has a camera or that you bring a camera and ask your instructor to film you when you are free diving, not only to show it on social media, but also to see your technique and learn from your mistakes. Usually students learn much faster when they see themselves diving. Much easier to correct students' mistake after the dive while they see themselves. GoPro is excellent for videos. Also because we all like to take photos, I also have a professional housing with a professional Sony camera. This is the Seafrog housing. If you want to make really cool professional photos, then I suggest you use a housing with a professional camera. The photos are much better than a GoPro. I'm the ambassador of Seafrogs, so if you are buying anything from Seafrogs, please use my code for a discount. I will put the code and the link on the description below. The next important piece of equipment every diver needs is a CPR mask. A CPR mask allows you to give rescue breath to a diver who blacked out. Free diving is a pretty safe discipline, but emergencies do happen and we want to be ready when it happens. I never needed to use my pocket mask, but in case one day I will, this thing costs only five to ten dollars, so why not just have it in your bag? I always attach it to the buoy, because usually when the diver needs help, it will be up on the surface next to the buoy. What's good about the CPR mask is that it also have a, a place to connect the oxygen tank so then you can give rescue breath while giving pure oxygen to the diver which can save his life. Another important reason to have a CPR mask is because one of the risks of free diving is a collapsed lung or rupture lungs and when this happens a diver can spit a lot of blood and then people are afraid to give rescue breath. If if you have a CPR mask, then it's much safer to give rescue breath. And usually divers won't feel afraid from getting any uh, disease from the blood, especially now during COVID. It's much more likely that a person will perform CPR with a pocket mask than without a pocket mask. So you are increasing your chance of survival by owning a pocket mask. So CPR mask, extremely important. Another important item I always have in my bag is a liquid soap. We use liquid soap to prevent the mask from fogging up. We just rub it on the mask. I always have it in my bag when I'm coaching uh, students. There is nothing more annoying for new students when their mask is getting foggy and it tempers with the relaxation. As an instructor, you want to give the optimal conditions for your student to stay relaxed during a dive. So. Liquid soap, very important to defog the mask. Then another item I always carry is a small microfiber towel. When you come up from the dive, it can be very cold, very chilly, and you have like 20, 30 minutes to go back to shore. So you take off your wetsuit and you stay dry. It's very light and it costs only $7 at Miniso. 
extremely useful. And then the last piece of equipment I always have in my bag, and that is if you are a man, is a shaving razor. Why do you need a shaving razor? Because there is one thing more annoying than a foggy mask, and that's a leaking mask. I've had incident where I forgot to shave, and then I'm in the water, I go down to 30 meters, 35 meters, and water is leaking into the mask, and then I equalizing, and it went into the nostril, and I'm pushing the water through the station tube to the middle ear, and then you are done for the day. So make sure to shave before every dive, and in case you forget, you always have a backup as a shaving razor on the boat where you can just trim your beard or mustache. Another item I always have in addition to the shaving razor is Vaseline. You can put it on your mustache and then it prevents the water from leaking in. Very important, I always have it on the boat. The Vaseline is also useful to put on your feet to prevent blisters from the fins or from any other piece of equipment that can cause blisters. Some people put it on their hands also. If you are prone to get blisters in certain spots, then you just rub the Vaseline. Extremely useful. Okay, I'm sorry about the crickets. They are getting out of control. Another piece of equipment I always carry when I'm coaching or teaching new students is an essential oil inhaler. This is extremely useful if your students have block airways. If my students have some blockage in their airways, I just send them to the boat for 15 minutes, ask them to massage their face, all of their sinuses, their nose, their eardrums, everything that um, can be blocked, and ask them to inhale. This thing works magic. It's a tip that a lot of instructors don't know. We know it because we are in Thailand and it's very ubiquitous over here. So just remember where you learned it from. Smell good. The next items are not important for your freediving, but recommended, and that is to be smart in the sun. So I always carry a bandana. When I'm diving with students, I wear it in the water. Protect yourself from the sun. Sunscreen. Hat when I'm on the boat. Usually I have the hat with the paddy logo. It makes us look more professional, according to Paddy, as a Paddy instructor. And the most important thing is water. When you are diving, you are losing a lot of liquid, so you have to stay hydrated at all times. I recommend my students to drink six liters of water a day while free diving or scuba diving. If you go diving with a school or with instructor, then you are done. This is all you need. If you are a school or if you go diving by yourself, then you also need a buoy setup. A buoy is our surface support. We use it for relaxation and for recovery breathing when, you, when we're coming up from a dive. It's very important for an instructor to have quality buoy. Quality buoy makes it much easier for students to relax, to do the relaxation breathing, to stay on the surface. I have the to be free buoy, which is pretty good, except it keeps deflating every few days. So I need to refill it every few days when I go to the open water. It's quite annoying, but other than that, it's an excellent buoy. Inside the buoy, you need a line. You want a line that is thick enough and um, easy for the students to grab. You want it to be marked at the correct places. The third piece of equipment you need on your buoy setup is a pulley. A pulley is extremely important, not just for the instructor's convenience of adjusting the line, but also for your own safety. If a person black out and the safety body can't reach the bottom, he has problem equalizing or something else, then the pulley is your backup. It's much easier to pull a blackout diver from the depth using a pulley than without a pulley. Also, a pulley makes it much easier to adjust the line based on the student's needs and the student's uh, experience or the student's ability. I really don't like to have a 20 meter lines and then have the students that uh, can go to 5 meter or to 10 meters uh, dive on a 20 meter line. So I adjust the line based on the ability of each student. It's much safer to the student. If you are diving with a school, you want your school to have a pulley 
and a lanyard for your own safety. The next item that you need on your buoy setup is a bottom weight. This is my bottom weight. You want a bottom weight of around 10 kilos. I found it that with less than 10 kilos, the big divers or the ones that are a little bit positively buoyant are pushing the weight up instead of pulling themselves down. So you want a pretty heavy bottom weight. Here I have 10 kilo, which is for me enough. The next thing that you need in your buoy setup is a surface line. Usually they will have it on the boat, but it's always good to have another surface line. Sometimes I go diving with the kayak and then I just attach it to the kayak. Just a 10 meters or 20 meter surface line, always useful. I also always use a pocket mask, also known as a CPR mask in the buoy, just for safety. And then the last piece of equipment that you must have on the boat, in my opinion, is an emergency oxygen kit. If your school doesn't have it, please don't dive with it. So inside this bag, first of all, I have a first aid kit. The first aid kit just have the usual stuff like Gaza pad, bandages, betadine, scissors, tourniquet, everything you need to handle small cuts and wounds. And then there is an oxygen tank. This is 100% oxygen. In case of an emergency, oxygen is the best way to help an injured diver. So I always carry a full tank of pure 100% oxygen. It comes with a first stage device. You just plug it like this and you open it like this and you can see how much oxygen you have in your tank. Then inside I always have an unrebreather mask. This is a mask to uh, provide oxygen for a breathing patient. Non-rebreather just means that you don't recirculate the air that a person exhales. You always get pure oxygen in. It has a little bag in it. I'm not going to open it now because it has to stay sterile. This small kit, which costs about like $200, can save a person's life. So I don't understand why a lot of schools don't have it. So please don't dive with a school that doesn't have it. And I always have in my emergency oxygen kit another set of CPR masks. This is to handle a non-responsive, non-breeding injured diver. You just like plug the oxygen to the CPR mask and you give rescue breath together with pure oxygen. Another piece of equipment I always like to carry in my bag is an oximeter. Oximeter measures the saturation of oxygen in your blood. Um, so it's pretty cool to show the student what happened to their oxygen saturation when they are doing static in the pool or dynamic. And also I think it's very important to have it in your bag if one of your divers by accident get a lung squeeze or something when they go deep, they can go to the boat and you can measure their oxygen saturation. Very important for safety. The other day I had my first really small microscopic lung squeeze. Um, I spitted a little bit of blood. Then when you go to the boat or when you go back to the shore, you immediately measure your oxygen saturation to make sure everything is okay and you are safe. It's also important to have on the boat vinegar. It's not the season right now, but sometimes we have giant jellyfish here in Kotau and you get stings. So it's good to have vinegar to combat the jellyfish sting. Last, but definitely not least important safety item is a phone with rescue numbers. It might seem obvious, but usually we free dive in foreign countries and in remote and rural areas, such as Kotau, for example, and the emergency local numbers are not as simple as 911. So make sure to ask huh? local dive shops for local rescue numbers and add this number as one of your emergency contacts. I also added blank spaces on the PDF checklist so you can write down your local rescue numbers. That's it guys, I covered all the equipment you need when you go free diving by yourself or with the school. If you think this video is important, please like it, share it. If you are in Thailand and you want to learn free diving, free diving is an amazing sport, it's an amazing experience. In my opinion, much better than scuba diving then you can contact me for a course. If you need any advice about other piece of equipment, 
feel free to comment below or send me a message. Thank you for watching.